very nice to speak at this uh, conference, which uh, on my part is already a, a, a big success. Um, I'll talk about uh, housing because that's the field I'm working in. And um, I want to come back to the brief that uh, Richard supplied us all, which contained, let's say, a level of desperacy in it. Um, perhaps Richard uh, transmitted a, 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 a sort of idea that architects are just there to put uh, the, the candles on the cake. We don't bake the cake, uh, we just uh, put candles on it and in the best case we are allowed to burn them or perhaps to um, uh, make the candles out again. Um, but I'm not a masochist. I enjoy working in housing where this aspect of influencing uh, is perhaps uh, the most prominent promise uh, uh, the most prominent. Um, and I think, um, that are, are perhaps uh, two cliches uh, which uh, um, um, sort of exemplify how this mechanism um, uh, might work. So here you see an aerial picture of uh, uh, very much a sort of social democratic uh, volume housing uh, supply uh, north of uh, Amsterdam. Um, but of course, uh, in more recent years, uh, the Noddy House, the uh, house uh, equally mass produced in, in, in many ways, uh, which is focused on uh, what's called market. Um, the Noddy House is uh, a phrase we learned working in uh, Fazakerley, Liverpool. And uh, it's a derogative term. And uh, Noddy is not an adjective. Noddy is the person standing in front of uh, his beautiful uh, ornamented front door. Um, obviously, Noddy likes to have uh, an embe embellished um, um, chimney. He parks his uh, car in front of his house. He's got flowers in his garden. I've got no ju judgment on either of the two uh, cliches. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they are realities and it's very much a question of how architects uh, go about in uh, this reality. My talk uh, is divided in uh, uh, four parts. I will start out to uh, sort of sketch the uh, uh, framework in, in which I try to talk um, and then address uh, three other uh, themes. Uh, and I will do so along two projects with a sidestep to one project, which I will discuss quite briefly. So mass production and uh, uh, economy class in housing. A very challenging uh, concept uh, I've come across uh, the past uh, decade or so is uh, uh, the idea of mitkomfort, mitkomfort, uh, as um, the Germans pronounce it, which has been uh, uh, researched and also published by uh, two uh, Swiss architects, Lukas Imhof and uh, Miroslav Schick. I know that Lucas is locked in and listens, so perhaps we can include him in uh, the debate later. Um, but I think what's so interesting about this uh, Mietcomfort ID is that um, within this book, there's an enormous focus on what you could call the midfield of society. Uh, so not the, the fringes of society, also not the fringes of architecture, not the periphery, no, very much uh, 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 the midfield, which is something different, in my opinion, uh, than uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, something like market. Um, I won't explain the book because it's available in German, unfortunately, only. 
Um, but one of the, uh, I would say the piece de resistance uh, of this book is uh, perhaps the outdoor space. Um, how to approach an outdoor space in terms of uh, uh, this idea of comfort. Um, when I then look at uh, an image like uh, this, which is taken somewhere in uh, Amsterdam, um, you know, this is the balcony uh, we make today. Um, and it's not even ugly. Uh, it seems as if every box is ticked. Uh, the railing is all right. We've got a beautiful timber uh, floor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, the brickwork is nice and, and the aluminum window frames and the uh, 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 glass railings are, are nice. Um, but somehow, these balconies are never used. And, and I think um, th th that this small drawing that Lucas made, uh, which is his, on the cover of uh, Meetcom 4, is uh, sort of very critical to uh, uh, such developments. What we see here is normal life. Uh, uh, a chair, perhaps an old stair or a chair or a second hair, uh, hand chair, and someone has uh, taken his, her uh, shoes off. Um, so this book is terrific. It's very rich and it's not easy to sort of summarize. But if you uh, read what the publisher uh, says about it, it, it's this, and I think that's sort of uh, a reasonable uh, 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 summarization of what's in the book. This picture itself is not in the book. Uh, it's a picture uh, of a housing estate uh, designed by Paul Mebes in Berlin. And, um, but you can see immediately that this balcony uh, has other properties. It's uh, uh, in terms of comfort, uh, you'd sooner say that it's an outdoor room uh, than that it's uh, 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 something that's reasoned by uh, technology and efficiency as uh, the Amsterdam uh, example uh, uh, does. The Amsterdam example, however nice, is of course very easy to make. It's a sort of add-on thing, uh, which uh, 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 well is cheap. Um, this is a different reality. Um, I'd like to say something about the difference between uh, need and demand. I think those are essential um, uh, economic uh, terms. And I think all of us uh, today, in a way, have addressed the difference between the two. And you can have long stories about, uh, uh, you know, real demands and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and whether architects should or can help in finding those. Um, but let's leave the ideology uh, aside and simply state that, uh, um, needs are individual and uh, the way individual needs can be transferred into uh, uh, an economic demand um, that in a way is what housing housing design and housing supply has been doing the past two centuries. Um, just one sidestep um, uh, to uh, a, a smaller sideline to, uh, to one of my uh, uh, projects. Now, um, by the way, I, I'm an architect and, and I have to show my own work, I think, in order to sustain my opinions about housing, which is, of course, not to say that I have the pretension that um, these projects answer or escape uh, the problematics as, as, as highlighted. So they are not a, a victory, whatever. Please look at them as being part of the same reality as, as all other projects. But anyhow, the outdoor space again, what you see here is uh, a project made for uh, an 
investment companies and not for a project uh, project developer who sells off his uh, uh, um, uh, property. Um, so an institute, an economic institute, which has a long-term commission to uh, its real estate. Here you see the plan. And in the plan development, um, the location of the outdoor spaces were crucial. So there was a deliberate choice to locate them on the corners of the plan, uh, which is the most expensive uh, uh, position to, uh, uh, to make. Um, in Holland, what you see a lot is that the uh, balcony perhaps are paired, which saves one uh, um, precast concrete element per balcony. Uh, it's much cheaper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But not in this case. Um, so the, the outdoor space was considered to be a room uh, connected to the kitchen space and to the uh, uh, dwelling space itself. And um, it was um, uh, articulated as a room by uh, uh, introducing very solid uh, um, um, uh, concrete stand-up, an articulated railing, and even uh, uh, glass screens to close off uh, the balcony from uh, uh, wind, but also traffic noise. So there you are sitting in basically a protected space between the, the trees. Um, but back to um, the 60s and 70s, when Holland uh, built estates like uh, this. These estates had become habitats. Uh, uh, meanwhile, people actually live there and uh, have been born and raised there and uh, have experienced all sorts of joys and tragedies. Uh, it's their world. We got the commission to look at uh, four of these uh, uh, high-rise uh, slabs, uh, in total 704 units. Um, of course, Omort, uh, the district we are talking about, uh, is firmly rooted in modernist thinking about uh, how to live. And it's not equal to uh, uh, Le Corbusier's dream of uh, 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 his cité, um, but it's quite clearly connected to it. Um, this was uh, the balcony as we found in uh, Omort when we started working on the project. Um, and that's interesting because our uh, client thought that the balconies were ugly uh, because, um, predominantly because of the aluminum railings. Um, but when you actually talk to people, uh, they might tell you that um, this is their outdoor space, that they're living between the trees. And um, who are you to touch this, mate? It's as simple as that. Um, so we didn't touch the balconies. Um, we. Uh, had to maneuver between these uh, uh, two opinions. Uh, we had to find ways to modernize the railings. There was like 13 kilometers of uh, railing in this uh, project. And we talked to uh, 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 railing companies in order to find uh, 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 solutions that were both efficient and uh, aesthetically uh, pleasing. Uh, which then resulted in uh, this. On the gallery side, uh, this took uh, another form. Uh, galleries are even more, let's say, repetitious than uh, uh, balcony uh, side. Uh, so uh, the railings got another form there as well. It also had a quite pragmatic reason, which you uh, can see here. Um, uh, under Dutch uh, standards, housing standards, it is obligatory to uh, look at people who need a, a, a wheelchair. Uh, so the decks had to be level access. Uh, and in front of the house, we needed 
uh, a meter and a half turning cycles, which the uh, railings quite neatly solve. Um, another aspect of the scheme or another uh, theme of the uh, scheme uh, was the ground floor. Uh, obviously, you see a picture here of uh, uh, the new ground floor uh, showing uh, uh, dwellings at ground floor level, uh, which were not there before. Um, you also see, uh, let's say, golden bricks, uh, golden window frames and uh, large uh, outdoor terraces with timber ceilings. Um, but within a quite repetitious and efficient structure, you might say. Um, this is uh, the plan of the ground floor. It's actually a slightly other version of uh, the ground floor as uh, we just uh, uh, saw. Um, but it's very interesting. This sentiment of, uh, okay, what are, how boring are our uh, uh, ground floors was translated by us in an abstract way, okay, apparently people uh, uh, note a sort of lack of the urbanity. They uh, note a sort of uh, absence of uh, vitality on, uh, on the ground floor, which was uh, entirely uh, logical in the Le Corbusier uh, uh, dream, uh, but it's in our mind, uh, was still experienced as a sort of uh, phantom pain. So we uh, proposed to re rearrange the ground floors to take out the uh, garages and to extend the ground floor um, with uh, a room, uh, one room, and then a staircase leading uh, to the first floor in the zone where formerly the deck, uh, the precast concrete deck access uh, were, um, and then enter through the kitchen and then the uh, floor plan would uh, stay as, as found for, um, uh, for the rest. Um, I think the interesting thing in, in doing this was that this, this is a sort of contraband. Uh, this was smuggled into the project, not necessarily by us, I think, uh, this was very much uh, uh, on the client uh, as well. Um, but there was a sort of thought that, okay, if we supply these rooms for free um, to the people uh, 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 renting that first floor uh, apartment, we can seduce them to uh, have their uh, layouts, uh, the layouts of their flats uh, changed. And we can wait what will happen in these uh, uh, lobbies, um, these ground floor lobbies. So it was very much a sort of mod ball uh, strategy. Let's wait what will happen over time um, uh, in these spaces. This model has been made uh, after the affair, uh, but it uh, de de depicts a sort of scenery, which is actually um, what I've actually have recorded uh, in Omort, uh, namely that this uh, parlor is used for someone playing a piano. So you can uh, have a glimpse at the piano. You don't know what's going on there. It might be a rehearsal room or uh, uh, someone teaching piano, or it's just there uh, for joy, or perhaps even uh, uh, just for posh reasons. You don't know, but that's exactly what uh, urban life is. You get a glimpse of information and uh, you, know, you don't know entirely what's going on, but uh, uh, you may think that uh, this has an effect on, uh, um, on urban life. Um, there was a very particular um, question in architectural terms, how to uh, design these uh, ground floor uh, extensions. Uh, as you can see in these uh, sketches, of course, these uh, high-rise blocks had a sort of impolitely qualified, a sort of parking garage uh, uh, um, aesthetics to them. And we quite seriously thought, uh, let's not make these ground floor areas uh, too different from that reality. Uh, these interventions uh, shouldn't make anything which is um, 
uh, there already uh, appear ridiculous. Uh, so we really decided on a very continuous uh, uh, ground floor uh, architecture, uh, very consistent and uh, made in uh, precast concrete, just like uh, the rest of uh, uh, the estate. Um, and also to uh, reclad the end facades in concrete panels. I've not mentioned it, but of course, in this whole intervention, uh, things like insula insulation, uh, improvement of uh, uh, the mechanics and uh, electrical engineering, etc., were improved as well. As you can see here. So these ground floor uh, uh, units uh, had to relate uh, to uh, uh, these parking garage tectonics and we uh, uh, looked endlessly on uh, possibilities to sort of uh, introduce uh, uh, differences and, and, and sort of more noble articulation of the ground floor within those aesthetics. Uh, we arrived at, at two uh, weapons. We um, articulated the ground floor apartments, uh, not on a bay by bay basis, but on we uh, articulated the double bay width corresponding to uh, uh, the new homes that would be made on the ground floor. And we also articulated uh, the uh, ground floors as being somewhat higher. Um, therefore sort of uh, uh, nuancing the grid of the um, um, uh, houses themselves. So this whole play of um, uh, uh, need and demand was very much uh, negotiated, you could say. And uh, um, I think it was developed by uh, picking up signals from the ground, so to speak. Um, before we proceed, I would like to say some words about this uh, graph that uh, we made in the office. Um, and the graph complain, uh, compares um, the quality level uh, of a typical house, uh, which ever, uh, you know, from the time it is completed, uh, the sort of quality compared to uh, a new built house which has been realized on that particular moment uh, uh, becomes lower and lower. Uh, you can have discussions about uh, whether uh, 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 the lines drawn should be curved or straight or whatever, but the principle is that uh, uh, no matter how you turn it, there will always be a sort of e economic gap between uh, an existing house and a build which is and a, and, a build, uh, and a house which has been built on the same time but new. Um, and it's very worthwhile to realize what a refurbishment then does. Um, so we you can talk about uh, 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 should we invest more or less, uh, but there's one certainty, however much uh, money and energy you uh, spend, uh, it is very unlikely that any refurbishment will meet uh, the quality level of uh, a house which uh, has been constructed new at the same time. So negotiation is an important part of uh, 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 looking at uh, existing housing stock. And just to show you that, uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you uh, uh, some work that uh, was presented to our client in, I think, 1999 or something. The project was finished in 2011. So in a 12 years uh, time span, a lot of things changed. But in 2009, we uh, uh, presented uh, a feasibility study um, with uh, five scenarios. And as it goes, the client asked us to model uh, the, the, the most um, um, extensive uh, uh, intervention. As you can see, 
in this case, uh, there are penthouses built on the roof. Um, and at that time, that was a sort of legitimate uh, uh, consideration, you might say. Um, you can also say, see that in this case, uh, the uh, uh, blocks were uh, very strongly compartment compartmentalized, um, breaking up the long galleries uh, and uh, building a new uh, lift shaft in front of it. Uh, and two emergency staircases. Uh, each of these uh, uh, units serving four units per uh, floor, um, which then was drawn like this. Um, the, um, I'm showing this. Um, um, simply to sort of illustrate uh, 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 how the dialogues uh, uh, went about. Uh, the decision process itself uh, uh, could be influenced uh, by us at all, even if we wanted to, um, but there uh, have been long and serious uh, debates within the offices of uh, uh, the housing trust we work for, and it's absolutely key to understand that uh, working on 700 uh, units, even for uh, a large housing trust uh, owning like perhaps 40 or 50,000 units, uh, this is not jolly. This is an enormous investment and uh, it is uh, sooner portfolio management than it is uh, um, architecture. So more on negotiation. Uh, a project we uh, started working on much later in 2006 is this project in The Hague, where we were invited to look at uh, an estate of uh, 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 owned by a monastery, really. You see the uh, church here, uh, and you see uh, a school building on the right and a school building behind the trees. It was a sort of Catholic bulwark. Uh, within uh, 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 the Hague Southwest, uh, which was uh, characterized by uh, repetitious run up staircase homes. Um, we analyzed uh, the bulwark. We found out that the church uh, square was quite uh, subtly um, related to uh, uh, the tissue of the uh, uh, housing. We found out that uh, the continuous boulevards around uh, the estate had a meaning. They were designed by Bo uh, uh, Willem Dudok at the time. Um, very interesting urban scheme. Um, we found out that the different neighborhoods between those uh, boulevards were all actually quite different, although related to one another by axis, they were all different and our uh, um, content was here, very much marking uh, the core of uh, this particular uh, neighborhood. Um, this neighborhood would be sitting at this rather magnificent uh, green strip. Uh, the site itself uh, is on the left, hidden by bushes. And uh, looking backwards, it, it's still surprising um, or it's surprising to me that we had to spend enormous efforts to uh, make our client aware of uh, uh, the enormous qualities that uh, were uh, there uh, already. Uh, so we really had to argue, imagine that you take away these bushes and that you can actually live on such a boulevard, how nice would that be? Uh, some images, the monastery itself, uh, a small building for uh, lay monks. Uh, the entire estate was uh, designed by a brother of the famous Don Hans van der Laan uh, monk. Uh, uh, and there's a, a word for the style these brothers were working on, uh, working in the Bosses Hall, Boss School. So heavy brickwork, roofs, uh, vertical windows. Uh, and these were the schools. The schools were far less 
in interesting in architectural terms and perhaps also in heritage terms. And also they uh, didn't have uh, 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 an enormous amount of uh, capacity to uh, adapt to different uh, programs. So we had to negotiate and we wanted to uh, uh, structure these uh, negotiations. Um, so we sort of wrote an agenda for these uh, uh, negotiations. And I won't explain the entire metrics that you see here, um, but we um, uh, addressed uh, four uh, different themes. What are actually the objectives that we have to work to uh, in terms of negotiations? Which things are really firm? Which things are conditional? Which things are neutral? Which are the nice to haves? Uh, we also uh, made some statements about the relics, um, the things that stay, the, the monuments, uh, so which uh, uh, relics can go, uh, which things are uh, important to preserve, and um, which concepts are uh, important uh, to uh, preserve. Um, and then things like uh, external conditions and within the latter column i think especially the the phenomenon the phenomenon of scope creep was very important so as architects we devised uh, the metrics and when i say we we decided then the design team decided on this what we did was merely fill in uh, uh, this metrics and uh, um, um, published it and it, it sort of served as a, 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 a principle which um, as turned out later uh, survived much longer than the different uh, design uh, scenarios that were uh, eventually uh, tested on the site. So all in all I think we made seven or eight different schemes uh, but all these schemes uh, uh, lived up to this uh, particular uh, metrics. This is the scheme as built. Uh, in the center, you can see the church. Uh, above the church is the convent, which stayed. And then on the left, you see the uh, 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 lay monk's house with uh, the atrium. Um, we kept the church square. We uh, kept uh, 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 the axis uh, connecting uh, the uh, uh, square to the other neighborhoods. And we introduced very informal uh, east-west uh, uh, routes. Uh, just quickly, this was one of the uh, scenarios that, that we tested uh, with a, a more longitudinal uh, a church square and uh, all sorts of features that for all sorts of reasons were not acceptable uh, to the powers that be. Um, I proceed by talking about uh, uh, technology now. Um, because in this project, it was very important. Um, we, we picked up uh, the project that uh, uh, was eventually built, I think in 2009 or 10, in the midst of the economic crisis. Um, and um, uh, a developer working with uh, prefabricated homes approached us, can you uh, uh, make the scheme work um, uh, with our uh, prefabricated uh, homes. And that very much looked like the only possible uh, solution to, uh, to getting anything built at that uh, time. So everything was already, the, the site was already cleared, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the buildings were demolished, etc., etc. Totally unacceptable. Um, so we uh, fell back so to speak, to our metrics with the qualities in it. And we discussed how uh, uh, their uh, prefabricated home uh, could be used. And we also in quite openly discussed what the limits were. Um, so we ended up with a sort of repetition of the Dutch variant of the Naughty House. Uh, it looks like this. Um, we agreed with the developer to use uh, their uh, uh, prefabricated house 
and to design this, uh, the facades, um, the facades only, um, and design things like public space and everything that belongs to uh, urbanity. So this single picture in a way uh, summarizes our efforts. Um, you can see uh, the diagrammatic representation of that scheme of that type here. Very, very simple, very, very generic, very, very Dutch, neither good or bad, you might say. Um, we also uh, agreed with the developer that we would repeat this type until uh, uh, those uh, moments and places in the uh, urban plan where it didn't make sense to repeat them and uh, uh, where it made much more sense to design something of our own. Um, so there's a, another version of the same type, but then uh, rotated. It's a wide type and then very undeep. It also has a flat roof. Um, and these uh, houses occur uh, most notably on uh, the church square. So in the middle, in the center of the plan here. So looking at uh, the estate again, you can see uh, a repetition of uh, uh, almost identical plans um, with the exception of some corner types and uh, some types uh, uh, at uh, the church uh, square. Uh, and in these types, uh, different things happen. So quite intentionally, uh, we, and again, we is the developer and the architect, uh, we decided to uh, provide larger homes, uh, homes uh, which made it possible to uh, work uh, uh, from home uh, or to uh, have uh, uh, a, um, uh, uh, a family member uh, living in the house separately. Um, I think all in all, these were 18 or 20 uh, different houses and um, um, our developer thought that uh, this approached them however much uh, they wanted it, but they approached them as a risk. The surprising thing is that these particular types were sold first. Um, here you can uh, see some pictures of the uh, repetitious type, uh, which could be re repeated using uh, a, a sort of local language where you can see that the end facades stick out from uh, 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 the grid lines of, uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, the monastery. Um, and basically this street looks like uh, it has always been there, uh, as many people tell us. Um, these are these uh, narrow uh, or these wide and undeep uh, types at the uh, 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 church uh, square. The church square itself where you see uh, um, the housing, the church, but also uh, uh, the landscape which has been uh, designed by ourselves, which I still think is a very, very important uh, uh, contribution to uh, uh, the scheme. So we were able to uh, make raised planters with trees in it and it's very simple uh, uh, pl planting, but also long benches in front of uh, uh, the church, uh, which are uh, in reality quite often used by kids uh, playing football or, or sitting on them or, you know, whatever. This is one of the east-west running routes. Uh, the layman's monk house on the left, garden walls, our types, trees, narrow profiles, and then the square. Um, production was also in Omart, uh, the renovation scheme I uh, started with a major theme. If you look at the plan of uh, 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 these apartment blocks, you see that uh, new elevators uh, have been added uh, at the end facade, uh, that the access decks uh, have been um, um, uh, shortened, uh, so we needed to take out uh, 
the access decks were, uh, were uh, between the gray uh, hatched uh, access decks. Um, and um, we had to do this with the residents uh, uh, living there, which uh, puts an enormous question on uh, um, uh, things like uh, uh, safety during the works, about uh, noise, about all sorts of inconveniences uh, that people uh, might have. So um, this picture uh, uh, can be drawn quite quickly. And even uh, the uh, negotiations that you might have uh, about this quick uh, about this solution uh, don't take long, but how can you arrive at uh, uh, implementation? That was an entirely new question. What you can see here is uh, uh, the section of the same block. Uh, gray is everything um, that was existing and everything that's white uh, was approached as a sort of uh, additive uh, uh, structure additive in the sense that it uh, had its own foundations, even its own horizontal uh, stability. Um, for all sorts of reasons, we really couldn't touch uh, the existing uh, structure. So all wind forces uh, uh, that, that uh, 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 affect uh, these new staircase uh, uh, towers uh, had to be sold within uh, the structure itself. Uh, so prefabrication uh, in this case was not just a sort of uh, regionalist uh, response to, uh, to context or whatever. It really was there to uh, 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 respond to all these questions that I mentioned before. Uh, you can see the precast concrete panels uh, making the new lift shaft, but also the concrete or the steel structure um, for the emergency staircases. And as you can see, uh, these structures uh, were completely prefabricated in two parts, really. What you see here is a picture taken at the end of, of the morning where these two structures were uh, uh, um, uh, 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 erected. That took one morning. Um, and you can also see that within these structures, uh, uh, all details like uh, staircases, railings, etc., already uh, have been made. Um, so this really had to be uh, developed by us, but also by the contractor uh, and by the client, but also by the uh, residents uh, uh, living there. Um, so. In my mind, this is a sort of very uh, interesting aspect of uh, uh, technology uh, that you uh, uh, more think about, uh, let's say, uh, needs, uh, obvious needs, and uh, reason from that. So things like uh, speed of construction didn't have an economic objective in the strictest sense. It had a completely different uh, objective. In, in financial terms, it would have been much easier to uh, uh, build these uh, uh, staircases in a slow way. This is the interior of uh, the elevator shaft. And um, this is in itself quite a boring picture of uh, how the ground floors looked like when uh, the scheme was on site. And uh, elementary things like uh, providing a safe timber bridge to uh, the uh, uh, bike stores were uh, 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 required by uh, us and, and built by the contractor. So returning to this uh, uh, issue of, uh, uh, of uh, tech, uh, these four piles of paper uh, were issued, I think in 2006 to four different contractors. Uh, who uh, wanted to tender for the project. And uh, we set up a tender project as architects. No one else wanted or could do it. Um, and we uh, did not just weigh their uh, financial offer. We also looked at uh, uh, their plans, 
how to accommodate uh, the requirements of uh, uh, the residents living in the uh, estate, how to address things like uh, speed of construction, uh, up to things like uh, 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 radio policies uh, for the worker uh, 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 and elementary uh, things. Um, um, uh, politeness, uh, for instance. Um, and that is then the result. Um, so back to these two cliches now. Um, I have suggested that these cliches, as all cliches are, are not uh, untrue. Um, I would just argue that there are other stories available. So this is um, a Dutch child's book, uh, Pluck van de Petterflat, and it's about a guy who uh, lives on his own um, and he's living in a post-war tower block. Uh, and he finds out when he starts living there that it is a microcosm. He finds out that he has neighbors and he makes friends with uh, uh, a girl uh, living below uh, the famous uh, Stomper family. The Stomper family, family you see on the right, uh, there's only a father and he's got seven sons and um, Pluck uh, uh, was refused to play with uh, his girlfriend. So they made what is called uh, uh, the monkey chain. And he, um, by hanging on, 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 uh, uh, on the arms of his uh, uh, friends of the stompers, he, he could go to uh, his uh, uh, girlfriend. Um, and I think what uh, this child book, uh, uh, suggests is that um, uh, yes there are cliches but there are also very specific narratives in such uh, um, areas and I think that uh, one of the things that uh, architects can contribute to when they uh, look at housing is uh, uh, finding those uh, narratives and, and um, um, uh, sort of uh, come up with uh, another vocabulary to talk about uh, 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 the context um, they're working on. The other conclusion I would like to make is that um, um, in everything that I've presented, um, perhaps um, or what I would like to uh, have conveyed is that it, uh, the work is not entirely about the building itself. Uh, our work is also setting up a new bureaucracy against all the uh, bureaucratic or instrumental or systemic uh, things that uh, appear around it. Um, so our work is not, the building itself is perhaps also not the, uh, uh, the design uh, itself. And perhaps it's not even, uh, um, uh, the task def definition itself. Um, but I think what is very important in, in technical terms is that architects realize that tech today uh, is about uh, logistics, it's about uh, timetable, it's uh, uh, about all sorts of things that you actually don't uh, uh, see. And I would like to conclude that it's rather key in my uh, opinion that architects in addition to their physical work, uh, concentrate on uh, those matters that uh, vanish when the building is there. Thank you very much.